surgery. So these are some of the uh, pictures showing you, okay, showing you uh, some of the bleeding causes. The coming from the top left, the first one, it can either be a gastric varix that's bleeding, or it could even be a doula foil lesion, which is an aberrant blood vessel that's that that becomes superficial for whatever cause and causes a spurting blood vessel like you can see over there there's like a flush or a spurt of blood coming out um it doesn't take too long before the whole stomach gets filled up with blood and you lose the patient so swift action is what's needed in someone like this the next patient would be active ulcers either in the esophagus or the antrum the second picture the third picture would be the endoscopic clip therapy where you can see two clips being placed on you, this can either be the first picture where you're seeing the active bleeding coming on. You put two clips and the bleeding stops. The bottom left is the cautery, cauterization therapy, where we use heat current to cauterize the blood vessel so that you form a black escar to stop the bleeding. The same one right after the um, that. And then the picture to the bottom right is the endoscopic therapy that we're performing to stop this bleeding. So based on the um, uh, ulcer, ulcers have classifications forest one, forest two, and forest three classifications, depending on their risk of uh, bleeding, active bleeding uh, with spurt in arterial bleeding or oozing as F1, when there is a visible vessel at the base of the ulcer or the coagulum in the ulcer or uh, coffee uh, or, uh, you know, a ground, coffee ground ulcer base, it's called forest two. And when there's no signs of bleeding, it's called forest three bleeding. So uh, like you can see, this is, the this is a classification of peptic ulcer disease. Actively, actively bleeding would be a forest one, Forest two, when there is signs of recent bleeding, such as an oozing, uh, recent adherent clot, the bottom left one is a forest two, and the forest three would be the ulcer with a clean base. So the lower the forest classification, the higher the risk of morbidity and mortality in these patients. So drug uh, therapy, what we use, um, uh, they determine the rate of rebleeding. You know, blood transfusion requirement, length of stay is also reduced if successful endotherapy is performed. And um, uh, high dose PPIs also play a big role in helping preventing bleeding or re bleeding. So, the regimen that's commonly used, this is something every one of you has to remember. You work in the, you work in the emergency room or the ICUs, or you become a gastroenterologist in the future. The Hong Kong regimen, where a patient comes in, you suspect, you suspect upper gastrointestinal bleeding for whatever cause, of whatever cause. You give an 80 milligram bolus dose of a PPI of the esmoprazole or the Nexpro or the Nexium or the Pantoprazole, whatever it is. 80 milligram stat dosage followed by eight milligram per hour uh, infusion therapy. So you give the bolus dose and then you start the IV infusion therapy at eight milligrams per hour for 72 hours. So how do PPIs help? Remember I told you, the, st the stability of a clot is reduced by an, a by an acid environment. So um, pH of greater than six is required for platelet aggregation. So clot lysis usually occurs if the, if the pH drops below six when there's a high acid environment. So the PPIs help in this process where they help increase the pH so that platelet aggregation happens and clot formation is, um, is, is helped. So um, how do you prevent rebleeding? Like I said before, eradicate the H. pylori. If NSAID induced, avoid if possible or add high dose H2 blockers, the famotidine, ranitidine, all these medications or the PPI for as long as they're treated with NSAIDs because anyone with a prior history of NSAID induced bleeding, they're they are at a very high risk of bleeding. So um, one other thing about gastric ulcer versus duodenal ulcer is gastric ulcers should all should always be biopsied and they need and they need a relook endoscopy because not always do not always do gastric ulcers come from come from stress or hyperacidity or from NSAIDs. Some of the gastric ulcers can also be from malignancy. So that's something you need to remember that all gastric ulcers need a relook endoscopy and biopsy to make sure they have completely healed. So next one of the common questions.